everybody. So today's lecture is going to be all about how to plan your essay. And this is regarding the summary and response essay. So that's your first essay um, for some of my classes. So if that's you, this might be your very first essay. And it's a great one. Um, I love reading these because I get to hear so many interesting stories about, you know, what's been going on in your guys's lives and um, so let's jump right into it so how do you plan an essay like this um, the first thing that I want you to do is to start by annotating the prompt and this is something that you need to do for whichever essay you're writing um, so for this particular assignment this is the prompt and this is what it looks like to annotate the prompt when you're annotating the prompt you're looking for your purpose in the essay and I also want you to start um, trying to identify your purpose and then those basic requirements. Again, that's for whatever essay you're writing. So this is part of the prompt. And then these highlighted portions are annotations. So this is where I've highlighted. This is something that's really important that helps me understand my purpose and or a basic requirement. So for this one, you need to summarize two arguments, right? The first one is that you need to summarize Lamott's um, argument about dealing with her fears about writing first drafts. And then you also need to summarize Sidaris' argument about how he overcame a difficult situation um, when he was learning to speak French. After you've summarized those arguments, you're also going to be responding with your own insights about a meaningful experience that you've had. So by annotating so far, I can see that I need to have a summary about the Lamont piece, and that one is shitty first drafts. And I also need a summary about the Sidaris piece, which is me talk pretty one day. So I'm going to include both of those summaries in my essay. And then I'm also going to be talking about a meaningful experience that I've had. Remember that your response should be descriptive and it's going to help us understand a particular moment in your life that was really meaningful for you. So make sure that you're choosing something that you can describe well and it's a, a short moment um, that was really meaningful for you. Remember that it should also have happened over a short period of time. So this is like minutes or hours, not more than one day. This is important. And the goal here is to really slow things down and help readers feel like we're going through this experience with you. Okay, so we have several um, sort of main purposes here. Number one, summarize this. Number two, summarize this. And then the rest of the essay is sharing that meaningful experience that you've had and making sure that you're being super descriptive and really slowing things down. Um, so we feel like we were there with you experiencing this thing. Um, also, by annotating the prompt, I can identify some basic requirements. So for instance, the first draft needs to be three pages and the final draft has to be five. I need to show that I can summarize effectively and also that I can write descriptively. I also need to demonstrate that I can write fully formed paragraphs with a clear purpose and relevant details and use MLA format. So those are all of the things that I'm gonna be doing in my essay. So the first part of the assignment is to summarize both the Sidaris text and the Lamont text. Remember that each summary should occur after your introduction. So you'll have an introduction paragraph, then you'll have one paragraph summaries of Sidaris and then Lamont, or Lamont and then Sidaris, either way. But each one needs to be its own summary, and it should be one paragraph long. Make sure that you're only including main points from the text. Include the author's full name. Include the full title of the text. And remember that with summaries, we do not include opinions about the text. After I'm done with my summaries, then I need to choose an important moment to discuss. So this is the rest of my essay. So I've got an introduction and two paragraphs so far that are taken care of, and then the rest of those three to five pages is all about this important moment in my own life, right? Um, remember that your moment that you're discussing needed to have happened in 24 hours or less, and you wanna really focus on that descriptive language and those descriptive details. Um, we want to use paragraphs and an organization that makes sense for readers, so we're not jumping around between 
you know, different ideas, but rather flowing smoothly through this moment so readers can understand what happened and really feel like they're there with us. Um, the moment that you choose can be happy, sad, etc. Just make sure that you're okay with other people reading about it because your peers will see your essay during workshops. So if it's something, something really personal for you, that's okay as long as you're all right with sharing that with um, people in your group and with the class. So when we're going to be choosing a moment, one of the things we need to do is brainstorming. Um, so you can brainstorm in whatever way works for you. But in some way, I'd like you to list some important moments in your life. Um, you could make a pro-con list for each one, and then you can narrow down your topic based on which one you think fits the best in terms of, you know, what we're going for in this assignment. Um, so you want to make sure that whichever moment you choose is really important to you, so you'll have lots to say about it. And remember that it needs to have happened over 24 hours or less. So this is an example of a pro-con list and what it looks like. And this is just one way of brainstorming. You don't have to use this strategy, but you're welcome to. Um, so for instance, I brainstormed a couple of important moments in my life. So I went with my wedding day and a Disneyland trip. And then for each of those, I'm going to write down some pros, like some good things about writing about that, and then some cons, some drawbacks about writing about that. So let's say for my wedding day, I know that I remember lots of details. Um, there's lots of different parts of that day that happened. It was super emotional and very important to me. And it would be easy to organize this because I could just go from start to end, right? Um, cons, it was a long time ago. I've been married for a long time. So, you know, maybe I won't remember everything. Um, and maybe it wouldn't be very interesting to readers because it's something personal to me. You know, I'm not sure. Um, and then for the same thing, I would do the same thing with this Disneyland trip. So there's lots of details. Um, I felt lots of different emotions because I have kids. So taking them to Disneyland, you know, you get the happy and the frustrated or the sad um, moments when everything's going wrong. Um, it was important to me, so I'd have lots to say about it. Cons, organization might be difficult because we kind of bounced all over the place, you know, um, so it might be hard to organize an essay about this. It's not as important to me as my wedding day, and some things might be hard to remember since I was so rushed and distracted. So um, those are some pros and cons. And then as a writer and as a student, I would have to look at these things and, and weigh those pros and cons and decide which topic I think is the best fit. So once I've chosen that, um, that topic, then I would go ahead and start planning. So let's say based on this, if I were choosing a topic to write about, I'd probably go with the wedding day because it has more pros and less cons than this one, right? So let's say that I'm going to choose my wedding day. Then the next step is I'm going to plan my main points. So once you've chosen the moment that you want to talk about in your essay, then plan your main points. Um, you can do this in lots of ways, and the goal is to go from all of these ideas that are jumbled up, right, um, into some sort of an organized version of those same ideas. So you can do that in lots of ways. You can make a table, you can make a list, you can use the bubble method, um, you can free write and then organize, or you can use any other planning method that works for you. So this is an example of how I outline things. Um, I have used this probably from the time I was in grade school all the way up to and including when I was in grad school. Like I still use this to this day. <laughs> this I just like the bubble method. It's what works for me. Um, so if I were outlining, this is what I would do. I would put my main topic here in the kind of big bubble, right? And then I would have everything else branching out from that. So when I did this, I started by just putting wedding day, and then by writing down all of these things that happened on the day of that I would like to talk about. And each of these are going to be um, a paragraph in my essay. And then once I had all of these paragraphs or all of these ideas for paragraphs, then what I did is I went and numbered them. So I said, okay, this is the order that I would like to talk about these things in. 
So that way, when the time comes to write, I know that I'm going to write a paragraph first about just waking up and being excited on that day. And then I'm going to write a paragraph about snorkeling with my wedding party. And then from there, I'm going to write a paragraph about this nice relaxing massage that I got to get, followed by a horrible spray tan. All of this is true, by the way. <laughs> um, and then I would have a paragraph about making bouquets. Um, and then I would find number six. There was a heat wave, and then it rained. And then I would have a paragraph about how it felt walking down the aisle, saying our vows, and then going to our reception to see that our cake had literally melted. It was a great wedding day, full of ups and downs, lots of emotions. Um, so this would be my outline, right? And then I'm going to, as I start writing, when I've written my paragraph about waking up excited, then I can just sort of check this off of my list and then go on to writing a paragraph about snorkeling and so on. Um, so this is how I would keep myself organized. However, you don't have to do it this way. If you have a different way that works better for you, then use that. So once I have sort of an idea of what I want to focus on and which main ideas I have, then I need to move from main ideas into actually topic sentences. Um, it, this is important for you guys because one of the assignments that you're turning in asks you for topic sentences and you will not get credit for those main ideas unless you turn them into complete sentences. And those are your topic sentences. That's what you're going to use to start writing your actual paragraphs in your essay. So let me show you what I'm talking about here. You need one topic sentence for each of your main points. Remember that a topic sentence has a subject. And if you don't remember, a subject is the person or thing that is doing some kind of an action in a sentence. So if I say the dog ran, the dog is the subject. Um, a topic sentence also has to have a verb, and that's the action that's being done in the sentence. So if we're talking about the same thing, a, the dog ran, the dog is the subject, and then what is the dog doing? He's running, so that's my verb. And a topic sentence also has a complete thought. So the dog ran is a complete thought. If I went up to somebody and I said, that dog ran, then they would know I'm talking about a dog that ran, okay? Um, so examples. I took some of my main ideas from the previous slide, like snorkeling with wedding party. This is not a topic sentence, it's just an idea, right? I have that verb snorkeling, but I don't know who did it, and it's not a complete thought. So I'm missing a subject and a complete thought. So I need to make sure that I turn that into a topic sentence, which is this here. I met my wedding party and we all went snorkeling. So now this is a full sentence. So do you see how I've gone from my sort of idea of, hey, I want to talk about snorkeling to an actual sentence that I can use in my paragraph in my essay? So you want to make sure that you do each of those um, that you do this for each of those main ideas that you have for yourself. So again, um, one of my main ideas was that there was a heat wave that day, but heat wave that day is not a sentence. I need to make it into a sentence. So I did that by saying, of course my wedding would happen the one day Maui got record high heat and insufferable humidity. Um, so my husband and I got married in Maui. It was supposed to be super nice and, you know, not very hot because it's on an island, right? No. The one day that we were there, it was like record high heat and super humid. <coughs> Sorry. Um, another example, horrible spray tan. This is a main idea. And then if I turn that into a sentence, I can say what should have been a nice summer glow was actually the worst spray tan ever which left me looking more like an Oompa Loompa than a bride. Again, true story, it was a fun day. So make sure that you have topic sentences for all of your main ideas, that's very important. Once I have my topic sentences, then I need to add details. So remember here, we're building paragraphs. These paragraphs um, or these topic sentences and the details that you have are going to turn into paragraphs for your essay. Um, so start adding some details to each of your topic sentences. 
You need to be as descriptive as possible and help readers feel like they're right there with you. Use your senses to describe things. So sight, smell, sound, tell us how things felt, what they tasted like if you were eating, how you felt, use your emotions. So we really want to make sure that we are making our readers hear, feel, and see the things that we're going through at that time. So this is an example of how I organize things. Um, <clears throat> if I were writing a, a paragraph about this, so I would maybe make a table like this for each of my paragraphs. So here's my main idea. So this is maybe my paragraph about snorkeling, right? Because I went snorkeling in the morning with my wedding party. Um, that was one of the first things that I did when I got up. So I have my topic sentence here. I met my wedding party and we all went snorkeling. And then I'm going to list as many vivid details as I can so that when the time comes to add these details and write the paragraph, I have lots of stuff to choose from. Now, I might not wind up including all of this because I might run out of room or I might decide that I don't want to include part of it, but it's better to have a whole lot than not enough, right? So um, we went snorkeling in a little bay. And so I might want to talk about how that looked, um, the smell of the ocean air, my feelings, which were being super excited because um, I hadn't been snorkeling in years, um, a little bit of fear that I felt getting in because it was very sharp and slippery. And because it was in a little bay, it was like an immediate drop off from the rocks. There were waves crashing. So I'm an experienced swimmer, but it was still a little bit, you know, scary. Um, the site of the bay underwater, so I'm listing some things that I could talk about that I remember. Fear, clouds of blood in the water, I cut myself, and so um, it took me a while to realize that, but as I swam, I noticed big clouds of blood in the water, which was a terrifying feeling even for an experienced swimmer, right? Um, that feeling of scrambling up the rocks to get out, being disappointed because I had to end our snorkeling trip so quickly. Um, rushing to, you know, get myself taken care of so I wasn't bleeding everywhere. Again, feelings of frustration because, of course, it was my left hand. So true story, in all of my wedding pictures, my left hand is super bandaged up and messed up because I just destroyed it that morning snorkeling. So list as many of those um, supporting details as you can, right? All of those things that you remember about this one topic. So these are all of the things that I'm going to pull from when I go to write my paragraph so that I can really help my readers feel like they're right there with me, um, you know, going through this particular part of the event with me. So now that I have my topic sentence and my vivid details for my paragraphs, then I'm going to start writing those paragraphs, adding those sensory details wherever I can. But make sure that my paragraphs still have one main focus, a topic sentence, and details. So if we look back at this one, my focus here is on snorkeling. All of these vivid details have to do with that experience of snorkeling, right? How it looked, how it smelled, how I felt at different points of the snorkeling, but it all always points back to and supports this topic sentence, which was about snorkeling. So make sure that you're doing that. You want to write a very detailed and vivid paragraph, but you want to make sure that all of those details point back to that particular um, main idea. Okay, so um, this is an example of a detailed paragraph, and this is my paragraph that I would write if I were writing this essay, and this one would be about that experience of snorkeling, right? So as I met my wedding party at the Hanukkah, Kiana Bay, see I can't even pronounce it, right outside my parents' hotel where we'd say our vows at sunset. I breathed in the fresh salty air. Okay, so do you see how I started with that topic sentence that said I met my wedding party to go snorkeling, but when I went back to write it again, then I've added all kinds of details even to my topic sentence. So even with all of those details though, it's clear um, that we are going to be doing something at the beach and um, it'll become pretty clear that we're going to go snorkeling. So add those details in wherever you can. 
Okay. Um, the bay was an amazing deep blue, and there was sparkling water as far as I could see. We ran down to the slippery rocks. One at a time, we put our clunky black fins on, squeezed our faces into our tight snorkeling masks, and slid down into the choppy water, which dropped off immediately. I had been surfing, snorkeling, and swimming in the ocean since I could walk, so I took a deep breath to calm my nerves and slid into the deep, dark water. As soon as I got in, I was in awe of the beauty all around me. A family of sea turtles swam up through the crystal water to investigate us. I grabbed my fiancé's hand and pointed excitedly at the biggest turtle, shiny green shell, sparkling in the sunlight. She swam away and I could see the sun shine through the deep water as she returned to her babies down below. Then I saw what any snorkeler dreads, clouds of blood in the water. Puzzled and concerned, I looked around to make sure everyone was okay. I was relieved for a moment, then realized the clouds of blood were coming from me. I quickly went to the surface to see where I was bleeding and noticed my entire left hand was cut open from my wrist to the top of my thumb. Knowing sharks frequent these waters to feed, especially in the morning, I signaled to everyone that I was getting out. I made my way to the sharp rocks, threw my fins onto them, and pulled myself up, then assessed the damage. Bright red blood oozed out of my hands as I realized I'd cut myself on coral on the way in. Relieved to be out of the water safely, I set off to find some bandages. I wasn't in any real pain and got myself cleaned up with a first aid kit from the hotel. After I bled all over one of their towels while waiting. Oops. But then it dawned on me. I cut my left hand. On my wedding day. All of those adorable pictures of my fiancé and I exchanging rings would now include a bonus. My badly cut and bandaged hand. Okay, so as you can see, this is one paragraph. It's all focusing on this experience of snorkeling, right? Um, but I jam-packed it with all of these details about what was going on while we were snorkeling, what I felt like, what things looked like. Um, so I'm trying to really paint a picture for my reader so that they feel like, you know, they're, they're experiencing this, you know, happy moment at first this terror when I realize I'm bleeding, and then the frustration of realizing, oh great, now all of my pictures are going to include a badly cut hand, right? Um, so again, true story, all of this happened. I'm like so lucky and apparently clumsy <laughs> that I, I really did chop myself open on accident on my wedding day. Um, but all the other stuff happened too, right? Beautiful sea turtles, such an amazing experience snorkeling until I realized I was bleeding and, and so on. So this is an example of fitting lots of details into one paragraph and still focusing on that, you know, that experience or that part of the experience of snorkeling. So then what I would go on to do next is to write more paragraphs like this about all of those things that were in my outline. So a recap, you want to annotate the prompt to identify your purpose and the basic requirements, then summarize me talk pretty one day and shitty first drafts, each in one paragraph, brainstorm to choose a topic for the response portion of the essay, remember this needs to be an important, an important life event that happened over 24 hours or less, and then create an outline for the response portion of your essay, choose your main points, write those topic sentences, then add details. And then once you've done this, then start writing those descriptive paragraphs, taking the readers through your life event one thing at a time. Okay, so any questions about um, your SA1 plans or what should be included or any part of this process, um, feel free to get in touch with me and let me know. And I can't wait to see what you guys write about.